All right, you're watching TVC Breakfast. Let's get to our next discussion now. Security report from the Department of State Services reveals he has identified some key players in the plot for an interim government in Nigeria. The motive, they say, is to stop the transition of power from President Muhammad Buhari to President-elect Bola Tinubu, who emerged winner of the 2023 presidential election. In a statement by the DSS Public Relations Officer, Peter Afunanya, the service considers the plot being pursued by these entrenched interests as not only an aberration, but a mischievous way to set aside the Constitution and undermine civil rule, as well as plunge the country into an avoidable crisis. The service says that the machination is taking place after the peaceful conduct of the elections in most parts of the country and warns misguided politicians against a repeat of June 12, 1993, which was considered one of the fairest elections since independence, but was annulled. That's the crux of our discussion next. Joining us in the studio is a public affairs analyst, Abraham Great, and uh, we also have uh, Welfare Officer, National Union of Nigerian Association, Italy, Michael Apute. Gentlemen, nice to see you both in the studio. Good morning. Nice to see you Great. again. <laughs> Good morning, Andrew. Well, yeah. it's nice to have all of you. Hope when we were thinking of this program, I thought you were all going to join us via uh, virtually. But uh, it's good to have you all in the studio. We thought it's necessary to be in <laughs> live now. <laughs> good. So, Abraham, let me start with you on this. I believe you've been following this uh, development, uh, especially the, the aftermath of the election and uh, all the reaction and all of that. Now, recently, the DSS came out to uh, alert Nigerians that uh, there's a plot, uh, the plot to actually truncate the inauguration and uh, seek interim government was real. I wonder what came to your mind when you heard that. Well, for me, it is um, it's a test on our democracy. And the proof of maturity is stability. Mm. That really we have having a mature democracy. We have issues like this. And you've seen with nations, you know, nations that are having a viable uh, democracy, issues that they've gone through. Mm -hmm. In our countries, we're too quick to make conclusions and we're too quick to pull down our country, to judge our countries. But when you read you know, nations around the world, you read about France, you read about, about Germany, you read about the United States of America, uh, the, the document Magna Carta, for example, you see the suffering that England or the UK went through, I mean, uh, Britain went through uh, for over 800 years before they were able to actually up establish democracy and all the kind of ludicrous uh, situation they, they went through. So we are not going through what is out of time. You know, you know, the European people, uh, European people say uh, a word. They say, we have not seen this type before. We are only scaring, uh, you know, the hearer. You know, we've been there. The world is our history. To know, we saw January 6th in America also, mm -hmm. a very great test of... So what we're having is an education, it's public education. People are getting educated, uh, educated about the Nigerian democracy. Mm -hmm. But in my eyes, I see the Nigerian democracy being tested. Mm -hmm. Now... Also, there's another proverb in the Yoruba that says that we grow wiser, we don't get, we don't get, um, we don't get to become more dull or more foolish. Mm. In fact, there is a song uh, that were written. In, I happened to copyright my song as my, my song in Ivory Coast at the time when I was in my early twenties with this guy that wrote the song on the low premier gawo nepa gawo you know i speak french as good as <laughs> oh, my english oh i see that's so, amazing what that song is actually saying is, is that the magic system the magic system yeah, exactly. we 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 actually copyrighted our song at the same time so i met them and they were telling me the story behind the song that one of them actually had a girlfriend who you know uh, uh, left him and then when he's, you know, he's made it in French, we call it reçu. Mm -hmm. That means you've broken through. You are successful. And then you want to come back. <laughs> so we say that being a fool at the first time is not a crime. Mm -hmm. It's being a second. So, we've had 1993 in which we've had situations like this. And the nation did not collapse. We have learned from that. I wouldn't say we should learn from that. We have learned from that. And the difference between then and now is the fact that under that period, we were, on, we were not living under a constitution. We were under a military rule. In this case, we now have a viable 
constitution, 1999 constitution, as amended. So it means that the test can only be responded to by provisions of the constitution okay. and not emotion. All right. Now, uh, Abraham is saying, of course, we have precedents. Yeah. We, we have had this experience before. And Nigerians who were around, who knew how everything went, knows that uh, it is alien to the Nigerian democratic system to even think of, a, of an interim, uh, interim government, as the case may be. Yet, Nigerians are, are, are making moves, from, at least from the report from the DSS. What do you make of this? Is it, lack of, is it just mischief or it is lack of information or lack of knowledge of what uh, this, this could lead a country to? Anyway, uh, thank you, Michael, and uh, good morning, Nigerians. And uh, I want to say this. First and foremost, to me, I would say uh, lack of knowledge, not lack of information. Hmm. Because if you are not informed, you are deformed. And when you are deformed, you cannot perform. Now, we are informed. What is the information? The DSS has come up openly to tell us there is a plot. And they are asking Nigerians to unmask these people, we don't need, you don't, they don't need our permission. They don't need our consent. It is their constitutional right to unmask these people. Because just like uh, Abraham said, now we have a constitution. In August 1993, there's a difference between 1993 mm. and 2023. We were under military rule, quite all right. And now, the, 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 in 1993, the winner of the election was not declared. In 2023, we, our democracy has grown. We're on, remember, in 1993, we're under military rule. Mm -hmm. Now, in 2023, a winner, there, there was an election. It was contested. And... A winner was declared by the high neck. So there is no room for an interim government to come in because in 1993, there was no declaration. Now in 2023, there was, there, in 2023, there was a declaration. So what am I trying to say? The DSS should go ahead. Just as I said, we are informed. But we lack knowledge. Now we have been informed. Let the DSS go ahead to arrest this thing, to unmask these people. If truly, if truly there is a plot, because it is the constitutional right of the DSS to do their work. I am not the DSS. I am not to tell the DSS uh, there is a plot for for uh, mm. They, they got the information th through intelligence. So what, what you're saying is they should go ahead and uh, arrest if, if need be. Yes, Mike. I will tell you, they should go ahead because, in fact, uh, to me, uh, let, the, let the DSS not make, make it as if they are, uh, you know, causing, causing a kind of tension or making Nigerians to become panic of this uh, May 29 that is coming because telling us there is a plot because they, to, to, to the best of my knowledge the best way they says do their work they do their things without Nigerians knowing secretly secretly <laughs> that is that is their work but why are you coming and why are you blowing it loud you are causing tension yeah but on the other hand one would say that when an information like this goes out you also send signals to those who are plotting it to let them know that we know what you guys are doing mm -hmm. so they can shelve their plan. Mm -hmm. do, 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 will you see that as a strategy? I, I see that as a, in, in a way, it actually have made or could make uh, those who are complicit in the plot mm. to uh, get to a point of almost public uh, acceptance or, or a reality and probably apologize or repent or, or, or what have you in this matter. Now, one thing Nigerians have to know is the integrity of the DSS. One of, in, in all of our services, the most quiet of them all should be the DSS. Mm -hmm. And one of the th way that they are trained and one of the ethos of the DSS is ethics and value. They, they would not just come out with frivolous information to 
uh, cause uh, tension. The country is already very volatile, and the country is already under serious tension. I'm sure that the act of them actually making this public is an intelligence on its own. So giving information, you know, to those, as we're speaking, there could be mutiny going on in the military in, because I'm sure it's not every sector. And why, let's first of all look at why are we where we are? You know, I've always not been a great proponent of democracy. Uh, or let me put it this way. I understand democracy, I appreciate democracy, but I do not believe that a country as diverse as ours needed to use democracy the way we are using it in terms of complete feder federalism. I, I, I support the notion that was pushed under Awolowo when it would, we would have gone for uh, the parliamentary system of governance. That would have eased the tension where every but we region... But we had that in the first republic. Yes, so we, we, under the, we had the unitary system, we have all the system, but again, we understand what happened when Inam Diazikwe went on and we are under the federal system, now federalism system. The problem in copying American note for note is that you create American problems in your society. So that is why we will find that Nigeria... Uh, how do you mean the American problem? So I, I'll give you an example. American have, when we copied American democracy, mm, the presidential with, system, the presidential system mm. uh, of American democracy, we did not copy along with it uh, the electoral college. Mm -hmm. Now, the principles of the electoral college is now almost being interpreted in the election that is unique that we have had, which is the section 134 of the Electoral Act, the place of the FCT. Mm -hmm. Now, an average person is asking themselves, and FCT, what does it interpret? Not minding the precedence of the 1977 case uh, law of uh, Awolo of, uh, uh, versus uh, Shagari mm -hmm. at the time, and other case law that I've established, I believe it's Session 299, mm, of 299. The, that is already established the FCT to be counted as or treated as a state. Mm -hmm. Now, what we are saying, in effect, is that we are saying that FCT is an electoral college. That is an American situation that we are putting into our... We are having a reflection yeah, but, of an but American... A, a lot of persons will not agree with this because the point there is when you're copying... Um, um, models from different parts of the country yeah. and you're bringing it back home, you need to situate it around your own peculiarities. If we bring, for instance, if you, if you, if you follow the, the US, the Trump versus uh, 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 State. The, the, the election between Trump and uh, Biden. Uh, no, no, not Biden. Hillary Clinton. Hillary, Hillary Clinton. Clinton. Very good. Hillary Clinton. I, I wonder yeah. why the name was leaving me. That if you watch that election, popular votes. Hillary Clinton won popular vote by but, over two million exactly. votes. Exactly. Yeah. But by electoral college, Trump had to become president. So the point there is that a lot of persons who have been watching the American system, you see, if you won popular votes, why would a select number of an electoral college invalidates that vote, then what's the place of popular vote in the entire system? But that's the complexity of the American uh, uh, politics. That, if, you, if you bring that here, replicating that in Nigeria, you'll be creating more chaos. We don't have to bring it, but we, are creating, we have, in this particular election circle, mm -hmm. we have created such situation. Mm. And the but but the, law, the law has said, the law has said, Abuja has no special status whatsoever. But those so, who are so, agitating yes. are not agreeing that the law said they want the law, they want the court to tell them again, or probably for the courts to, in this case, establish a new precedence to say by which time the, you know, the loser can then go to the Supreme Court again. We are creating a constitutional crisis. And what I think is that we need to focus on maturing mm. as politicians. But a lot of people will say the, the, the law is there already. The constitution is clear. It is just the understanding from the people who are reading it mm -hmm. that makes a difference. The law hasn't changed. The, that, that law did, it wasn't made today. It was made I appreciate ago. you saying yeah. that. But those who do not vote for the winner... Mm do not understand that interpretation. And this is a, so, a student so, so of law. So it's the lack of knowledge? Yes. Yeah, so okay. when you study law, one of the things you know about law is that whenever the law is not explicit, it does not mean what it does not mean. 
You, you understand what I'm saying? So in that session, you have session 134, 1, 134, 2, and one is saying that you win the popular vote, the other is saying that you win two third of, you know, 25% uh, uh, in two third of the state. If FCT would have been explicit or important, it would have been another clause, not as an addendum to a clause. All right. But emotion they, they, is all over the place and people would not understand. Oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I like the word, the use of emotions. <laughs> I, I think, I think the, the place of emotions. Okay. Uh, one would say that is where all of this is coming from. An unchecked, unharnessed emotion where you're not able to place things objectively to the extent that a case is already in court challenging the process. Okay. So... The unchecked emotion is not waiting for the court to come up with whatever they are finding is so that we can, we can have a way forward. And then there are plots, there are protests, and there are agitations. What do you make of that? Okay. Uh, I'm happy we all know that uh, uh, the case is already in court. Mm -hmm. And when a case is in court, we are expected to wait for the mm -hmm. judgment. That is, first and foremost, has to tell you that our democracy is growing. Mike, let me tell you something. Coming to look about this interior government, do you, do you know that even before I came to Nigeria, I started hearing this rumor, before the election, mm. there will be an interim government. Yeah. I started hearing the rumor. You see, this thing started from everybody has a role to play in this. Our religious leader. You see, let me quote the word of late Fela Nicola Mopolkuti, who said, religion na politics. It's not playing out. Mm -hmm. It's not playing out in churches. You know, I, uh, to, uh, to, to an extent, I'm disappointed in uh, some of our religious leader, I mean, the church leader, coming out to, 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 to say some, causing some uh, 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 tensions within their members, within the Christians, within Nigerians, saying, inciting some uh, 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 dangerous words to people that say, this cannot be understood, this cannot be the, the same people, they will tell you there will, be, there will not be election, there, there will be election. You know, we don't know who to believe and who not to believe. Mm -hmm. At this stage, uh, I want to say, you see, uh, uh, we should all wait for the, the court to decide this case. Mm. And if there's any plot, any plot, to me, I still look at it as rumor, motions or no motions, I still take it as rumors. Mm. And if there's any plot, let the DSS go ahead and treat it as a treatable offense. Mm. All right. You're watching TVC Breakfast, and on this segment, we've been talking about the revelation, if I have to use the word, by the DSS that there are some misguided elements within Nigeria uh, that thinking, plotting, planning, or imagining a situation where there will be an interim government instead of uh, swearing in the president-elect, Bola Tinubu, on May 29th. And uh, we are looking at the implication of this. Of course, the DSS has sent a message out to all those who are involved in that plan that uh, it will not come to fruition. They should shelf uh, the plan and ensure that the democratic process is respected according to law. And um, we have in the studio Michael Opute uh, as well as uh, Abraham Great. Uh, we've been helping; they've been helping to make sense of uh, this discussion. All right, uh, Abraham, let me come to you on this. The the issue there is the DSS, like uh, Mike Michael said earlier, have the role to ensure that they get intelligence and prevent anything that will truncate the system in a way that Nigerians mustn't even know that anything like that is going on. However, we're here now already. What do you think, how best do you think the DSS should go about this? Whether Nigerians know or Nigerians don't know. First of all, we have to remember that uh, the constitution is supreme. Mm -hmm. You know, the session one, two of the Constitution establishes the fact that uh, the Constitution is supreme. So both the DSS, both the aggrieved persons, 
both the president elect, INEC, everybody has to work in the confine of the provisions of the constitution. In the case of the DSS, they have the role to disseminate this information. So my opinion is that what are the level of cascading that information? Mm. So I'm sure that they would have, you know, uh, briefed all the security apparatus in the country and briefed the president. And then I believe also maybe they have been given the permission to make this public. Like we saw in the terms of INEC being, INEC server being uh, uh, in the cyber crime, almost one point something million arc. And some people are disbelieving 12 that. million, actually. I mean, 12 million. 12 million. That is not Across out of this world. We saw that in American election. We saw that in the UK during Brexit. We saw this is, this is an in thing right now. Now, why are we here and why should DSS come here? We have a situation where the president-elect have the minority of vote in the history of this country. And why did that? I will go back to the issue of my situation with democracy. You know, I want to love democracy. I want to be completely democratic. But what I believe is that we should use democracy in such a way that we have brought it home and prepared for our own situation, mm -hmm. our uniqueness, mm -hmm. bearing in mind how diverse we are as a people. So in this case, you look at the constitution that we have, and we're looking at what are people saying about this constitution. The people are saying, first of all, they don't trust the 1999 constitution. They want constitutional amendment. But people are not educated enough that there have been several legislation. In the recent time, we have almost 16 legislation uh, acts that have been signed by the president. When you look at some of those acts, there are actually provisions of the Confab report of 2014 that has already been embedded. We don't have to shout the word constitution before we start restructuring, I mean, restructuring before we start actually reconstructing mm. the country. But part of the failure of government is what I now see the DSS saying. The government, particularly under this administration, have not been communicating with the people. Communication is only happening now sparingly. One of the things you will find about countries that work is that the president, the, uh, um, the intelligence services communicate with the people on a daily basis. You know, I work with some of the government parastatas in this country. I take training, I lead trainings and stuff like this. this and you look at things like uh, nearby you here, uh, uh, the Chartered Management Institute. Their website is nowhere to be found. It's, I mean, it's, this country is still, we're still like 70 years behind time. In, in, my, in my view, the presidency should be talking, the president should be talking to the country at least three, four times. Not, I assure you, you know, I love Mr. President, but I, I don't want to be assured. I want to hear you. I want to feel your smile. I want to see your cry. I want to see, and you know what? Now I see President Buhari actually come on screen without notes or without the special, you know, and he's talking and he's more real. It's more empathic. And I feel if President Buhari was doing this three times in a week, the people will love him more. People will understand. The incoming administration must understand that the DSS, the police, the military, the presidency, um, INEC must be talking to Nigeria on a daily basis. They will throw some banters at you. They will laugh at you. Nigerian, you know, uh, parastatas, DSS should follow some key Nigerians on Instagram, on Twitter, respond to their tweets, retweet their tweets. This is how we know. If not, government is far removed from the people. Mm. All right. Well, the, the Nigerian people, the Nigerian situation is very peculiar in such a way that, of course, the issue of communication is key because it helps people understand and feel the pulse of what you want to do and what you intend to do and how you're doing it and, and all of that. But the, the level of um, the challenge that we have, whether it is security, whether it is poverty, whether it's economy, unemployment and all of that, some Nigerians will say, please, what we want now hmm? is for those things to be handled. It's not necessarily for us to see your face every day. But the point there is, all of that is important if you see it in the long run. We want to see the president, we want to hear him talk about all of these challenges as much as he's also working towards ensuring that he solves all of the problems. All right, Michael, I'll, I'll, come, I'll come back to you shortly. 
Uh, let's go on, an, on another uh, break and then we come back for, for me to ask you uh, the next line of action. Stay with us on TVC Breakfast. You're watching TVC Breakfast. We still have uh, Michael Opute here with us as well as Ibrahim Great looking at uh, some of these uh, issues that we're talking about. Now, Michael, before we went on the break, uh, we're talking about issues of democracy. Now, we have embraced democracy. We're in the Fourth Republic now. We had the First Republic uh, between, uh, 19, between independence and 1966. We had the second one, 79 to 83 or 84. Then we had the botched Third Republic, which was the Ab Abiola time. Right. Anyway, he didn't, uh, he took off, but he didn't take off. But here we are now in, in the Fourth Republic. And a lot of persons say that we are still learning what the standards and what the tenets of democracy is. That is why 23 years into this republic, uh, some persons are still calling for an interim government, something that is alien to the constitution, something that is alien to convention, something that is alien to the processes of governance. Talk to us when it comes to the issue of what we have to do to entrench uh, our democracy and make it thrive even better. Okay. Um, thank you, Mike. You see, what we are seeing now or what we are going through now is part of what we strengthen our democracy. Because if there are no challenges in democracy, democracy will not grow. Mm -hmm. That is, uh, that is uh, a fact. And uh, let me, let me, let's go back and look at what did we learn from the past interim government in 1993. That was, that was, that was a period from uh, August to November. We had a sh uh, the, the shortest uh, uh, stay the shortest rule by uh, the shortest head of state, that is uh, Mr. Ernest Shoneko. He, he stayed for three months. And if you look at that, because I've sat down to look at what did we really gain from that interim government? How did it come to, to an existence? And I discovered that, you see, interim government is actually, from the last one we experienced, is actually... Uh, a step or let me say a uh, kind of a way to cause confusion mm -hmm. or to destroy our democracy because if you look at it uh babangida handed over power to Enes Shoniko. He, he stepped aside he stepped aside <laughs> uh, yeah he stepped he stepped yeah. aside and in the process while we were uh, uh, Ernest Shoniko was trying to return back democracy, and all of a sudden in November, November 17, if I'm correct, uh, uh, Apache mm. came on board. So, you see, I will not blame this. In fact, at this junction, I want to applaud the DSS for even, you know, taking step ahead to say there, there's a plot. Because from that last interim government, this, uh, it didn't just happen. In 1993, it didn't just happen. Terrible did not just happen. Uh, there have been that plot for power not to go to a particular zone. Now, Mike, let me tell you: this last election, everything plays. We tribal is in place. Religious, uh, we had religion, and we have a uh, uh, political actor playing, and we have uh, uh, some powerful, maybe in court, cabas also played out. You see, there have been different, different ways to stop or to destroy this democracy, especially this concluded election, just concluded election, but the, as God we have it, it still survived. So that is why I'm saying this, this, this uh, uh, rumor of interim government, I call it rumor, I will, I will still call it a rumor. So that's why I said, just like what uh, 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 Abraham said, now, he was talking about communication. The president should be communicating to Nigeria. The INEC should be communicating. The president-elect should be communicating. The National Assembly should be communicating. Yes, to me, they are, they are communicating. Are Nigerian listening? Because our constitution is there. Don't tell me we should stop learning. We have to continue learning because... Uh, uh, 
They say the best way to learn is to pretend as if you don't know. So if you tell me good money, I will answer you good money. Why? Do I say, why do I have to answer you good money? Because it's money. At times you're going to tell me good money when it's evening. I'll say, what's wrong with you? So democracy is a learning process. That is why our, our, our legislator, they go there every day to argue or to debate or to promote or to strengthen our constitution. Now, come to look at this election or the interim government or about the DSS unmasking those that are plotting uh, the, the interim uh, government. I will say, yeah, we have a constitution. What does our constitution say about those plotting such offenses? It's true. should do it. Yeah. It's clear. Yeah. Mm. Well, the, the point there is uh, we, we, there can't be two governments at the same time. Mm. We have one government that is recognized by law. Any other thing anybody else brings and is outside of the law no. is treason. Mm -hmm. That is, that that is, is how it is treated. That's, that's how that's it is I seen said. in the eyes of the law. But uh, Abraham, as we wrap up generally, uh, the issue of interim government, of course, most Nigerians say that uh, we don't want those days anymore, but we need to move forward. However, when it comes to those who are plotting, what do they need to know when it comes to understanding that we must all submit to the law, we must all submit to the constitution and the process. Well, maybe I can put it in five succinct way. One is that, first of all, there was a respite in my heart at some point towards having such a government in term. And it will be because of the postulation I heard of Pastor Chris Okotie, who was proposing to Nigerians Aboriginal democracy. And we asked him what was Aboriginal democracy, and he was saying, where we sit down, we all agree, it's not a coup, it's not, well, we say, look, the direction we're going is not, we want to rebuild this nation. So on the basis of that, if we need to put six months aside, so there will be a president, or, or there is, an, it's a, okay, we're not holding an election. That I could have given a thought for, because it will be for the way of reconstituting the country that has been constituted already. But in this case that we have moved beyond that, we can still introduce such by creating you know, committees like the CONFAB that we did and implement whatever their recommendations are. There are 600 recommendations. But for the aggrieved people, first they must understand the session 285 of the Nigerian constitution, which gives a guidance to those who are aggrieved by election. Also, we must remember the doctrine of substance, it is called the doctrine of substantial compliance, which also gives respite that you can conduct elections and there can be anomalies. And you cannot, because of the totality of the, uh, 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 because of the an an anomaly, annul the totality of the effort. So the doctrine of compliance must be put away, and then the doctrine of consequence mm -hmm. must also be, meaning that even if what it is, Section 134, yeah. is what people are interpreting, it, it may not be interpreted at this time. Mm -hmm. It will be for the future. All right. We must uh, leave you here now. Thank you so much, Ibrahim Great, for coming on the program. Thank you for having and, me, uh, always. My great friend, Michael Lopute, thank you so much for coming as well. My pleasure. Thank you.